prepared to get out of the way. <laughs> Hey folks, Eric Deol Jarhead here. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to quarter saw a 32 inch, 16 foot dug fir. And let me tell you, on an LT40 standard, that's going to be a challenge. The first thing, of course, you got to get it up on the mill, and we had a block in the way to stop it from rolling into the mill right away. So we kind of had to work it a little bit to get it there. But once we got it, uh, with a little help, making sure it stays on the forks, we can get her up on the deck. It takes a little work to get a big log like this on the deck. Uh, you just got to make sure it stays on the forks. Then it's going to knock the mill around. They always do. All right. Once we get it up and get it positioned a little bit, we're going to kind of roll it around. I uh, didn't show you that, but just trying to make sure, you know, we got to make sure the pith is right. And then the next thing I got to do is kind of walk the mill head back and forth a little bit and make sure I can get it past the log because I've pushed it over the stops as far as I'm comfortable with. So I'm gonna roll the head back and forth a little bit and just make sure I'm gonna be able to clear on the operator side of the mill. You know, I wanna give myself at least half an inch on the on the deepest part of the log. So then we get going and make that cap cut. And that's, you know, that's standard issue, right? Take the cap cut, knock it off. Gotta watch out, these things will flop around. Oof, man. All right, now we wanted to try to make a six inch cut. You know, one by fours or one by sixes would work, but if we could take a six inch cut off the top, when you're quarter sawing this way, you want to get as deep as you can so that that top slab that you're going to cut off will be quarter sawn or at the very least riff sawn and quarter sawn. Usually you can get these deep enough that you can get a good quarter sawn cut on them. So we're going to go ahead and try that. But you know, before we get into it, after checking it, I knew we were going to have to whittle it down a little bit, so out come the chainsaws, and oh boy, now the fun begins. Dust everywhere. You're eating sawdust right now, right now let me tell you. All right, so, you know, we'll whittle it down a little bit, knock as much bark off as we can, and then we're going to get into it. So kind of look down the side, and you say, yeah, I think I can make it. But boy, that bark gets in the way. And, of course, it did. Stop the mill just dead in its tracks right there. So get the wedges out, pound them in, try to lift some weight up so that you could draw the head back. The, the sawdust builds behind the band right there. So trying to pull it back can be a real challenge. So you just gotta beat in some wedges and work it back slowly. And once you get it worked back, then get in there with some chisels and hammers and crowbars and things and try to get that bark off. and then start cutting again. And oh look, <laughs> we don't make it all the way. Dang it, okay. Pound in some more wedges, relieve more tension off the band, try to pull the band back. Couldn't get it back very far this time, but we got a crowbar in there and peeled off the bark. Got to crank up the tension to 3,000 PSI and then rock and roll. Here we go. Let's let her rip. Get her done. Get that slap cut. But, up, oh, oop, there you go. <laughs> Didn't quite make it. So, got to get in there with the hammers and the chainsaws and things and whittle it away a little bit. And then finally, we're able to get it passed. When is it with the wood too big? Once you make that first one, you know, just slide her off the top. It's kind of a reverse roll with the log clamp. Kick it over and it'll fall back on the forks. I have to rock it around a little bit. There she goes. All right. Got her down. Now we got to flip the log over. But again, you know, you're quarter sawing, so you want to flip it 180 degrees in this case. And again, try to come down as deep as you can. The problem now is you got a flat bottom, so it's gonna run up against the stops and the widest cut you can make then is 24 inches. You got 28 inches between the band guide wheels, but since I can't kick it over because it's flat on the bottom, we're only gonna be able to cut 24. So we're gonna go ahead and check it, just make sure we'll take four inches out of it this time. One by fours or one by sixes, they'll work fine either way. So take that cap cut, get that cap out of the way. And then decide to go ahead and take a flitch just to open up that opening face a little bit. So just take a one inch flitch cut out. We can trim it later. 
We weren't able to get a good slab cut out of it, and I decided discretion's the better part of valor here. So instead of making a big slab cut on that side, because you're quarter sawing and any of the round outer edges of the log will be quarter sawn if you take them out, I went ahead and rolled it up and then took a four inch slab cut off of that side. And that way I can kick that one off. It's a little bit of a pain to get it out, but we got it off of there. Lost a little video right here, so you didn't kind of see the start of that, but that's okay. I think you're all right with that. <laughs> so we get that one off, and you just got to work it, you know, push it over on the side, drop the forks, roll it out, get it out of the way. We can roll the log up, get her up, and because it was so big and I wasn't able to get it perfectly flat when I rolled it up the first time, we've got a bit of a wedge there, and that's all right. On these big logs, you're gonna have some of that. So you just come through, skim that off, get it nice and square, get that piece off, and then go ahead and come down and dive in deep on it. And we're gonna try to come down a good six inches because again, you know, I'm trying to make one by sixes. So if we come down pretty deep, deep as I can get down in there, but above the heart, I wanna get above the heart. Got a little camp pop there. And then we'll be able to mill something out of that too. So we'll go ahead and we'll box out the heart. That'll be a one inch and so we'll knock that one off. But to do that, I'm gonna have to roll those two big cap cuts out of the way and we'll just put them on the ground. Just get them right out of the way. You could tell it was the end of the day too. It, getting tired at this point. Took all hands on deck. Now we can do a reverse roll and kick that one by out of the center. There we go. All right. Now flip this one up. Push it up into the stops. We'll take a cap cut. Look at all that old man's beard and moss on the, on the bark of that log. Kind of cool, actually. Swing that debarker in because I was in the bark there. And you get into the bark, you know, you want to use your debarker to help keep the pan sharp. The chatter you can hear is because I was picking up some sap and bark in the band wheels. I'm going to have to clean them off. All right, now I'm going to cut another four inch slab out. And the reason to do that is because of the grain pattern. You'll notice it's really up close to the top of the log. So we're going to go ahead and take a four inch slab out of this. We'll kick that one off as well because we're going to want to stand that up and mill it upright to get that quarter sawn grain that we want. All right, move that guy over. Start knocking it down. Put your weight into it. You can see there we're getting mostly rifts on, a little quarter sawn in there, right out on the edge near the operator side. Might want to trim that off if you don't want that grain that's really fairly rifts on. But you can see that's that grain starting to stand up nicely, except for right on the edge. And that can be trimmed off. Get this thing knocked down now. Well, we're getting down deep enough that it's time to roll it over. It's also time to get some water. Big cuts, big logs, you really start pouring the water on. All right, we're gonna roll it around a little bit, get it to where I like the way the grain's sitting, and call it a night. Sat around a campfire that night, enjoyed a few adult beverages. It was really quite nice. Got started the next morning, we rolled up that four inch 
slab up against the cant that was still on the deck. Went ahead and start milling that down. Now the one thing I'm doing here is I'm watching my grain. I want to make sure that I'm not flat sawing. So you might get to a point like I was there where it was time to go ahead and flip it up. Now we've got the right size can, got a six inch and a one inch. So we're just gonna flip them up, clamp them together and then just start knocking it down. It takes time to do these big guys. You know, it, it always takes a lot of time to quarter saw a big log. Quarter sawing is always longer, but when you get into this big stuff, it's definitely gonna take longer. We're getting it knocked down now. Just sitting on the simple set, cranking them out. Customer is going to make some three quarter inch flooring out of this, I think was their plan. It'll only dry about a sixteenth of an inch, so then they'll have some room to plane. Get that one up on the deck and then we'll start working it down. Flip it up. <laughs> that mill move around. Even 16 footers are pretty heavy. Now what I did here, I wanted to get back down to six inches before I start cutting it the other way and because if you look right there you could see the grain where it was so we're gonna go ahead and we'll cut these guys out first get it down to six inches we'll knock them off and you can kind of see where the grain is it was standing up okay right there you're kind of in the middle so you're gonna get uh, you know some quarter and riff out of those but we'll knock those off and then we can stand this up and we'll get back to really milling up the quarter sawn stuff a lot of rolling around, a lot of moving around on a big log like this when you, you don't have the super hydraulics that you can, you know, do reverse rolls and wobblies and all kinds of other fancy techniques of quarter sawing. This is kind of the, the uh, poor man's quarter sawing when your sawmill just doesn't have the, the kind of log turning capabilities of the bigger mills. But you know, this mill will do it. Now we're getting done. Get that last cut, get her off the deck. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> Look at that, knocking them down. Gorgeous, Eddie. We're still pretty early in the day, and now we're getting the two big slabs up. All right, got them stood up. I went ahead and jumped ahead a little bit. You can see I'm on my third cut here. Now we just start knocking them down, one after another. We're gonna get down about halfway, and then once we get down to about halfway, we can flip it over. And You just wanna get down to where you've got a nice flat surface on both of those slabs, so that they'll sit nice on the deck. Of course, you got to get all that out of the way first. Once you get those out of the way, though, then you can flip them over. Get the flat sides on there. Do a little reverse roll here. Love hydraulic. Nothing better than hydraulics when you're working on big logs. All right, let's knock it down. Now it's just back on the simple set and rock and roll. Look at that sawdust build up. 
We make sawdust. Lumber's the byproduct. Got a nice little breeze. Helps keep the sawdust out of my face. And there you have it folks, 32 inches at the small end, 16 feet long, quarter sawn, got it done. And as always, if you enjoy what you see and you want to spread it around a little bit, do me a favor, I'd really love it if you'd hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching folks, the old jarhead out.